Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to Farming Simulator 17 and welcome back to the Western Shore. This is a different kind of episode we're going to do this week. Let's get this turned on. Different kind of episode. It is really almost immediately after where we left off last episode. We are in field 9-1 uh, and we just got done plowing this. I brought our cultivator over from where it was working over yonder. So... The cornfield that we owned previously is already fertilized and cultivated. The cornfield, or what will be the cornfield that we bought off there in the distance, that is plowed, fertilized, and cultivated. And now this field that we also bought is fertilized and plowed. It needs to be cultivated. So we're going to get our 5600 started on that. And then we're going to hop in the T-Dub and head up toward the farm, up toward Bramble Lane. And this episode, we're going to take care of some animals and make a little bit of money. And that will be kind of different. It's sort of what I do off camera. And I thought, just for uh, just for something different, let's go ahead and do it on camera. We got the train coming through here? Yeah, we do. Let's see if this is our Class 6-6. Six, six. No, this is the other one. There are two trains that make the rounds here on Western Shore. And one of them is a Class 6-6. Six, six, and I really want to do a Train Sim World episode with that Class 6-6. Six, six. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Right, so we'll put this guy to work. Uh, we said field 9-1. Field 9-1. And we are going to be doing field work. We'll click that to confirm. 9-1. Like so, we need to do, uh, let's say, three headlands. Uh, I almost want to do four, but we'll, we'll say three. No islands. Generate a course. Where are we headed? Uh, right there. <laughs> literally literally right there all right so we'll get this going right here and this thing does drag I think we just don't have enough weight on the front but this thing does drag even when it's folded all right so we will put this in gear we'll get rid of this we'll say first waypoint that's right there turn that off get rid of that there we go that is step one and we'll pause here to make sure this is working. That's unfolding. All right, feeling good about that. Let's hop in the T-Dub and head up to Bramble Lane. We're gonna feed animals today. We're gonna sell milk today. We're gonna do the things that I do off camera. We're gonna do them on camera today. And before we get rolling, we can turn off four wheel drive. We can unlock the hubs. All right, here we go. So I've had some thoughts and Field 9-1 is what sort of got me thinking about it. And in fact, before we take off, let's let's go ahead and look at the map because I can show you this a little better. We own more or less all of the center of the map now with the exception of these fields down here. So 9, 2, 9, 3, 7, 4, which is tiny, 7, 0, and 7, 1. Let's make it a goal to buy these fields this summer. They're about 40,000, 50,000 pounds a piece, but this is what I took notice of right here. There's a little pine forest right next to this new grass field that we bought. So probably next episode, we are going to take down that pine forest. I did go up and take a look at it. The trees are small. They're not great big, the great big uh, like 40, 50 meter pine trees. They're more like 20 meters total, maybe less. So we're gonna cut those down by hand and we're gonna make them into wood chips. We're not gonna try to sell them as logs couple reasons for that. I don't want to use an auto load trailer. We're not using any auto load on this map. I don't want to use an auto load trailer and I don't want to stack logs by hand. It just takes too long. So we're going to chip those and sell them for wood chips and see if we can make a little bit of money. But mostly we just want to clear out that land so we can extend field 6-6 six, six and make a bigger grass field. And I know we converted some grass fields to arable and said let's get away from all the grass work right because on uh, Gazelsburg we just became grass farmers and it was kind of boring but I think we've got enough variety on this map and we did sort of pull back from grass work for a minute I'm gonna be a really bad neighbor sorry apologies we did pull back from grass work a little bit we only had two cuts last year I missed the third one and I believe both those were off camera or maybe we did the first one on camera I don't remember, but we sort of moved away from grass work, but we can go ahead and 
and lean back into it because we do need to make some money and those fields are so convenient to the BGA. I think they're good fields to use for grass and field 6-6 six, six, it's already grass so we'll just extend it out. So next episode we will head up there with a trailer and a wood chipper and the sell point for wood chips is in the northeast corner of the map which is not all that inconvenient to field 6-6. Six, six. It's not it's not like we're going from the southwest corner of the map to the northeast corner. We're going from sort of east central up to northeast. So it's not the longest trip to make. And we'll see how many trailers full of, of chips we can take up there and sell and what kind of money we can get for them. And we're also going to be selling our poplar grove. We're going to harvest those as wood chips as well. So we'll need to be careful that we don't drive down the price of wood chips. However, I think those aren't going to be available uh, to harvest, right? The poplars that we planted, they're not going to be mature, ripe for at least one season, maybe two. I think they take a while to come up. So I don't think we need to worry about having a, a bumper crop of wood chips and driving the price down, but we'll be mindful of it just the same. So that's what I'm thinking of right now. And as far as feeding animals this episode, I want to do this because at midnight, when our animals start reproducing, I want all of their food to be absolutely topped off. I want everything to be maxed out, food, water, cleanliness. I want everything to be mucked out. I know that doesn't have any impact on productivity or health, but I don't know. It just feels like a good idea to have everything cleaned out. So I want our animals to be maxed out. So right now, we're going to feed our pigs. And if we take a look at our pigs, they have... Uh, I just topped off their corn. Let me get over here to animals right there. I just topped off their corn... I'm sorry, I topped off their potatoes. But we're going to get these other three taken care of. And when we go down and sell milk, we're going to fill up with water so we can top these off as well. Although it is supposed to rain later today. And when it does, that will add a little bit of water to the troughs. That is something the map maker included on this map. So we'll very quickly use our west trailer to give our pigs some corn, some canola, and some wheat. Hopefully we can do this fairly quickly and we'll go grab our Coda Universal. We'll fill it with milk, take it down and sell it because we are broke as always. And then fill it up with water, bring it back up, drop it off and get the cows fed. If we have time. And I think we may. I think we may. All right. So we want, uh, what do we want here? Right? We can start with wheat. And that's 120,000. That's 12,000. Uh, hang on. <laughs> We're going to bring the excess back over here and drop it off, but do we really only have... Yeah, I thought we had 80,000 liters of wheat. Oh, no, no, we didn't. We only got 25,000 from that field. And that's why we planted the additional wheat fields. That's right. We got 80,000 of canola. We only have 12,000 of the wheat. I hope we don't have to buy pig food. I would really like to get away from that this season. We spent so much money on pig food last year. But I think we're only going to put about 2,000 liters of this into the trough right now. And in fact, uh, let's think of a way to do this. Because our cows need wheat as well. And it would be smart to, while we have wheat in the trailer, feed both the pigs and the cows. We may do that. We may uh, try to very quickly and very discreetly dip down Bramble Lane against traffic and see if we can get this uh, into our into our cows as well all right so we'll get this in here and this is this is tricky i did not find a uk made or irish made side tipping trailer so we do need to sort of i don't know it's a little it's a little contrived it's not pretty we need to kind of jackknife it in there but we will hit a trigger right about Right about there. All right, let's see how much wheat they take. Uh, a little bit, <laughs> a decent amount. All right, so back in gear. And we are, like I said, very quickly gonna, gonna run up Bramble Lane. Get our gate closed. Right back here. You know, when I'm not hurrying to get this done to record an episode, 
I do enjoy this sort of, uh, I don't know, it's not mundane. What would you call this? It's a little bit more, uh, you know, pedestrian, a little bit more laid back. It's not the most exciting work, but it is something that needs to happen around the farm, and I do enjoy it. So we'll see how much we can get done today. Yeah, we're, we're at about 10 minutes. It will take a minute to get down to the dairy cell point, and then we'll drive over and get water, so we may we may end the episode there, but we'll figure it out. We always do. So what else is going on? Yep, I saw that forest up on top of the hill, and I thought that will be, uh, it'll be some money, because as it is right now, we own that land, I guess. And if we don't do anything with it, we're sort of leaving money on the table, and you know, I hate to do that. So we'll get some of those little pine trees cut down. And when we get started up there next episode, you'll see what I mean. They're not the great big... In the U.S., it's it's like a lodgepole pine. A really, really tall, skinny, very straight pine tree. They are not that. They're, uh, I don't know. They look like Christmas trees almost. So we'll get those brought down because they are... They are just money that we're not doing anything with. They're money that we could have in the bank if we chose to. So let's go ahead and do that. And we need to uh, go right up here. And right around here, if we can get some bite on these front wheels. Carefully. Oh, it's so light on the front end. Doesn't want to turn, sir. Help me out here, buddy. There you go. There you go. Oh, so close. Really. I'm not seeing the collision there. Alright. With enough swings, we will get it. But it is really... It just does not want to turn. There it goes. And a save game. Beautiful. Alright. We got so much manure out. Uh, last episode of Western Shore, I, I may not have been, like, very clear about it. But the reason I didn't muck out the animals was I wanted to use that manure. So we'll get this going. I wanted to use that manure to uh, supply our hired worker when they were throwing manure. And for some reason, it only went down to about 20,000 liters for the cows. So I had to take the rest of that out manually, which I don't mind doing. But I was curious why it didn't take it all the way down to zero. I thought we had enough between the cows and the pigs that we could have... Our worker could have used that and not had to buy any, but because they were, we had, we had a lot to get done. In fact, while that's, while that's doing its thing, we can come open this gate. We had a lot of manure to throw in those three fields, and I really would have uh, not wanted to, to refill it manually, to continually come back down here to the farm and refill over and over, or fill a uh, a trailer and take it down to the fields and dump it and then have the front loader down there so I think it made sense to have the hired worker try to fill from manure that we had at another location and and it just didn't quite work so we're gonna pull up here and what I'll do is close the gate behind us and then before we get back in moonwalk before we get back in we'll open the gate in front of us and then we'll skate on out of here that's our wheat uh, that's it. We don't have any more wheat to feed animals. I don't know if you caught that when we flicked across the menu as we were loading up this trailer. That is, that's it for wheat. So we'll see what we can do to keep the productivity of our animals up over the summer. Mostly it's the pigs that I'm worried about. I need them to be as productive as possible because our loan is back up to about 375. It never really comes down. I know it will at some point. And I need that to be this summer so we can get out of debt and get that wind turbine. But in the meantime, we are carrying uh, about, uh, yeah, about 375. So we'll, as soon as possible, get that paid off. And I think if we have a summer like we did last summer with the pigs at 100,000 euro, 100,000 pounds per day during the summer, then of course we'll pay that loan off fairly quickly as long as we don't buy anything. But our pigs have to be as productive as possible. I'm also curious if we don't want to... And we talked about this a few episodes ago. If we don't want to uh, let the pigs just go absolutely buck wild, right? It's like a rave in there. It's like a Prince concert. 
It's a scene, man. Until we have two or three or four hundred pigs and then sell like 300 of them at once. I'm curious if selling them daily drove the price down, whereas selling all of them at once, if there's a good market for them, we'll get a higher price and it won't come down because we won't be selling them again. Or I guess from another angle, even if the price does drop after we flood the market with pigs, it won't matter because we won't be selling them again. So that is something to think about as well. And I don't know if the economy in seasons is that responsive or that accurate. I don't know, but if that's possible, because it's the same amount of food, is it not? Whether we feed uh, 100 pigs for four days or 400 pigs for one day, right? Shouldn't that be about the same amount? So we'll, we'll see about that. We'll see how that works out as well, but we really need to make some money. And I don't know how many episodes we're gonna do for this for this map, uh, it's not old yet, not to me. I'm still enjoying it. I'm still finding new things. We're continuing to expand and find new areas to explore and play in. So I'm not bored with it yet, but I want to be mindful of the fact that at some point, maybe you might be. So we'll consider 50 episodes. If we're still feeling good after 50, we'll do another 50. I don't know. I'll go to Canola next. But I don't want to pretend that, that this map can go on forever and ever. So the idea of being out of debt and sort of closing out the map on a high note, uh, I'm not opposed to that either. If it's still working for you, it's still working for me. But when it stops working for you, let's be at a place where we can gracefully end things and move on. All right, time, 17 minutes. We may, uh, we may not get to the cows today, but you saw how low they were. In fact, we can go back here. Uh, right there we did as was our goal we did taper down the hay and silage it was at like 45,000 I just didn't feed them anything else all winter and they gradually ate all of that that was our goal and I'm curious to see when we're feeding them TMR from our mixer now whether it fills all those fields evenly and then consumes evenly or whether it every time we add say 12,000 liters it gives them 4,000 liters of TMR and 8,000 liters of the hay and silage. If that's the case, then, and for all I know, that is intentional. If that is the case, then the same thing will happen next winter. They will build up kind of a surplus of hay and silage, and then in the fall or early winter, we'll stop feeding them TMR, and they can just live on the, that maintenance diet of what's left in the trough of hay and silage, and it won't cost us anything. I also thought about as broke as we are, I and mean, we're about to sell uh, about 7,000. Where's my trigger? Where's my trigger? Why? Where's my trigger? We're about to sell about 7,000 pounds of milk. Ashley Ferguson is slipping. I'm just going to ignore that. I'll deal with it off camera. Uh, what was I complaining about? Oh, we're about to sell uh, like 7,000 pounds of milk. All right, so that will be some money in the bank. And we're also making that uh, approximately 25000 a day from our little grove down there. So we'll be okay if we do nothing else but sell milk and live off the passive income from the greenhouses. We'll make some money. We'll be okay. But I don't, uh, I don't just want to tread water. I want to make some money, and we're going to do that this summer. So, uh, what's left here? We, we gave them wheat. We gave them canola. We need to give them corn now. And I need to look for two mods. I need to look for one for potatoes. Yeah, Agro OC is where that's really critical for us right now because I am not going to plant potatoes on Agro OC. On this map, we have, what, four years of potatoes in storage? That's not a problem. On Agro OC, we need potatoes. On this map, we need to find a way to buy wheat. I don't think at the moment we have any way to buy wheat as pallets or bags or anything, but I'm guessing there's a mod for that. All right, so the last thing we'll put in is corn, and then we'll drop off our west trailer, run back down Bramble Lane, grab the Cody Universal, and get that going as well. Right, and I don't think we have to leave the trigger. I think we'll be good once that closes. Yeah, we're good. All right, and we need uh, corn now. And I'm just going to go about, like, 
Uh, like so. Oh, wait. <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> that was not what I wanted to do. I was trying to stop the... I was trying to stop the corn from filling the trailer, and all I did was disconnect it. Oh, it's it's evening for me. It is late for me. It's going on uh, 6.30. This is really late for me to be recording. As you can tell. All right, so corn in there. We'll come back over here. We'll drop the rest off, unload this thing, and then go deal with the Coda Universal. And I don't think we'll get to... I don't think we'll get to feeding the cows today. But I will take care of that. And then beginning next episode, we'll just take a peek at that menu so you can see uh, what it did when we put, uh, well, probably two or possibly three mixers full of food in for the cows. We'll take a look and see what it did as far as filling up those various slots. And cows are full of wheat right now. They have plenty of straw. Uh, we have tons and tons of silage bales, but we're getting a little bit thin on hay bales so depending on how spring is looking and how we move through those hay bales we may want to commit first grass cut to making animal food rather than silage but again with the pigs I, mean, I don't want to like harp on the pigs but again with the pigs being hopefully productive all summer silage is not as critical as it has been like the first and second year because this is coming up on as of tomorrow this will be the beginning of our third year on this farm and silage was critical the first two years i don't think it will be that important third year if we have the pigs going if it's a big if all right so we'll get this thing backed up we'll drop it off we'll head back down bramble lane yeah this is the sort of running around that i do off camera you know this you're, you're all into this game you play it so you know this is the the nuts and bolts it's not the most fun stuff to do on the farm although i've seen youtubers and i've talked to people that really really enjoy this stuff uh, i've talked to people that really enjoy mucking out they really enjoy uh, compacting silage things that i find to be uh, i don't want to say tedious that's don't mean it to sound disrespectful but things that are not my favorite things to do. Other people, that is their favorite thing to do. They love it. So this is, yeah, just kind of the, the maintenance work of running a farm. And I do think about people doing this stuff in real life because I know all over the world, people do this every day, every day, 365 days a year, no breaks. All right, so we'll get this parked up right there. And put the cover on it and drop it off and run right back down Bramble Lane and I'll get the T-Dub parked up off camera oh hey before we before we dip let's remember to do this and I just saw that tag down in the corner I know the Massey Ferguson is still slipping oh no no he's moving again either that or uh, is he moving uh, maybe. Maybe. Point, point 0.7 kilometers per hour. Point 0.6. Now he's he's stuck somewhere. We'll sort that out off camera. Oh, course play. I think the only way to guarantee that course play will not uh, drive through a hedge and fall into a river and drive into traffic and cause all kinds of deviltry and mayhem is to tell it you want like 14 headlands and have it just make laps of a field and not even try to make turns at the end of rows. It's a, it's a wonderful app, a wonderful mod. I love it and I hate it. It is, it, I mean, it is what it is. It's the limitations of the game. It does not have a, a significant AI component, but man, of course play is something else sometimes. All right. Uh, and once again, no traffic. Traffic is turned on. We just haven't had to fortunately deal with any, so good on us. All right, and I think this thing is, oh, carefully. I think this thing is empty. So we'll fill it with milk and head down the hill, and that'll be, I think, just about the end of the episode. I did, uh, I posted a photo on Discord, a screenshot from FarmSim of this tractor with this trailer and somebody asked could it pull that trailer I mean I don't know I, 
I guess it can. <laughs> and somebody else who does know tractors said, yeah, it should be able to. As long as it's dry, should be able to. So I know this is our smallest, lightest tractor, and it is going to be pulling 9,600 liters of milk plus the weight of the trailer itself. So it looks a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit underpowered, but it does pull it. Although you'll see more realistic kick in when we're going up one of the hills on the way to the cell point, And I find that to be very, uh, very realistic and very, I don't know, appropriate. We slow down to like maybe two or three miles per hour. It's only for a few hundred yards, but it just feels, it feels right. It feels correct. It is a small tractor. It is a heavy trailer. And that's when, that's when I find more realistic to be like most satisfying and the most, um, immersive is when you have those moments that it, it just feels exactly the way you think it would feel. So you'll see that as we go across and yeah, yeah, 26 minutes. We might even go a, a minute or two long, but so it goes. I'll get the, the cows fed next episode. We will be up in that forest. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, just on the other side of that shed on the other side of that field. We'll get started working in there. All right, so we're back out here. If you look in the bottom right, we do have a four wheel drive icon on. For some reason, I can't turn it off. I think it's because this tractor is not four wheel drive. If I try to turn it off, it turns the radio on. It's one of those deals. So I think we may have to go back into course play and put this tractor on a course and go into the drive control automatic section of course play and turn off four wheel drive. I don't recall ever turning it on. And I know I'm super mindful of the fact that this tractor is not four wheel drive in real life. So we would not use that in game. So I can't imagine that I would do that, but somehow it ended up turned on and I can't turn it off. You'll also see, oh, how tippy this trailer is. Once you add the MR XML to it, it is really top heavy. And I have flipped it off camera many times. Very frustrated because it does, it sneaks up on you. It really, really does. Uh, I don't, I try not to drive too recklessly. Here's that more realistic moment, by the way. We're just gradually gearing down. I love it. I don't drive recklessly. I try not to. But there have still been a lot of turns where you think you're going slow enough and you see the thing start to turn. Uh, and start to roll and, and as quickly as possible I open up the steering and try to get back underneath it and it very often it's just not possible and it rolls now if there's nothing in it I'll reset it not immersive but you know what are you going to do if it's got milk in it I don't want to lose the six grand so I'll bring the telehandler down and try to flip it back up on its wheels that can take a minute sometimes I have scooted this trailer all around the road you know what I'm talking about when you're trying to flip things back up and instead of instead of flipping they're just kind of sliding yeah that's good times oh game all right so we'll get this done I will uh, I'll hop in the 5600 figure out what's going on there no traffic and uh, and yeah we'll do a little logging next episode it won't be proper logging but we will be cutting down some trees and then the episode after that I don't think we'll be able to plant soybeans or corn yet so the episode after that what we'll probably be doing is I'll grind the stumps off camera and then we'll come back with our plow and get that forest converted to grass or begin getting getting it converted to grass so I know we've got a plow uh, I know we've got a uh, cultivator certainly and we've got two drills now both of which will plant grass seed grass so we can get that going. And I think, yeah, if we get, well, I don't know. I mean, if we do it, <laughs> it's a little, it's a little dirty, but if we do it off camera, I guess we could even do it on camera. Yeah, we can just pick up next episode still today, sixth day of winter. So that grass will begin to grow on the first day of spring. It's a little dirty, isn't it? I mean, maybe it's not. If we were working in the winter, Right? We're not 
we're not cheating. We're not editing the code or anything. We're just uh, doing three episodes on the same day. All right. That could be a possibility. All right, so we'll get back in here. 30 minutes exactly. Beautiful. That is destiny. There's our milk sale. We'll get this turned off. Like so. I'm going to hop around here. And we'll call it right there. There you have it. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Farming Simulator 17. This is the Western Shore. We'll see you next time. Take care now.